Hello everybody and welcome to a podcast of Biblical Proportions. Introduction. We all know our Bible. God created the heaven and the earth and Adam and Eve and flooded humanity, except for Noah, and delivered the people of Israel from their enslavement in Egypt and made kings out of Saul and David and Solomon. It's hard to find better known stories out there, whether you live in Europe, the Americas or Africa. Still, in the three millennia that have passed since these tales first came up, they have been modified, edited and filtered through translations and mistranslations. Some of these translations were penned thousands of years later in languages, cultures, lands and climates that could not be more different than those of the people who composed them. And this is crucial because it's language, culture, land and climate that breed the context and the basis for any story really. If by some divine miracle, aliens living in a distant galaxy get their hands on a copy of this book and they attempt to read it through their alien point of view with their weird climate, bizarre language and eerie culture, they will most surely miss out on so many elements that make the biblical tales so iconic and memorable. And in that sense, we too are aliens to many aspects of the lives of the Eastern Mediterranean people 3000 years ago and the stories they told. But it doesn't have to be this way. We have this amazing book to provide us with a direct connection to the psyche of the folks who lived in that time in the deserts and mountains of an insignificant and unsuccessful kingdom that has been severely beaten several times over the centuries. Yet in the marathon of history, as empires fell, the stories that these people wrote shaped so much of the world as we know it. This is what excites us most of all about this podcast. The Bible was and still is relevant to our lives, whether we like it or not. So in this podcast of Biblical Proportions, we will attempt to get into the mindset of the people who wrote and listened to these stories, their life experiences, their creative imagination, their knowledge of the world. They didn't have as references Sophocles, Shakespeare, or Dostoevsky, but rather the Akkadian, Sumerian, Babylonian, and Egyptian cultures that surrounded them with their archaic social norms and understanding and the sometimes similar, sometimes complementing, and sometimes competing deities. We will get to know the world around them, the history and geopolitical and social orders, and their very minimal scientific knowledge on which they based their explanations of the world. We will go over the stories of the Bible one by one in the order in which they appear in the book while immersing ourselves in the reality of the time. Hopefully, this project will bridge the gap between the biblical stories as they were written and how we remember and understand them today. Hi, Omri. Hi, Gil. So how can we know what goes through their heads? Uh, it's not that simple, but all we need to do is read the text and extrapolate from it. Now, the advantage, if I may say so, of our podcast is that we are not biblical scholars. Uh, we both of us didn't uh, study in the university. We're quite amateuristic. We did study in the university, but not the Bible. Yeah. <laughs> we are not biblical scholars, but we are writers. And if you take that as a fact that the Bible was written by people, if you understand those people, like uh, you understand their minds, like a writer tries to understand the mind of his or her characters when they write it, you can extrapolate and know more about the time that they lived and make it more alive. I like to think about it as if you watch a movie, a Hollywood movie from the 50s, you will have this kind of misconception that people actually spoke like they speak in the movie itself your mind the representation of that period of time in history will be tainted or colored by the images that you see in the cinema and the best example for it is the 50s movies 10 commandments the all of the characters there are very theatrical they don't speak like people in the context in which this movie was made the 50s the reaction from the crowd was very positive because that was how movies were made mm, back, then, yeah. back then. Compare that f to a 90s film, for example. You will watch like a, an Academy Award-winning film from the early 90s. So the industry itself and the mainstream audience, like the casual, not a film buff viewer, mm -hmm. 
will see that movie as a good movie. But now try to watch a movie like Dances with Wolf mm-hmm. or The Last Mohican. It will look strange because movies evolve in terms of uh, how real they portray yes. their character. And, and how they portray reality. Exactly. So what we would like to do in this podcast is some kind of a guided imagination, not in terms of meditation, but in terms of we would like you to imagine the biblical world that up till now you imagined it as something very filled with pathos and theatrics and people who uh, legendary people who speak in English speak in English <laughs> by the way imagine it more like the wire more like uh, people who are people always and yes this, and this It, podcast yes. is is by two writers and it's from the point of view of the writers and the listeners So things that mis- are mistranslated, uh, they are not only mistranslated because of the move from Hebrew, Greek to English, but they are mistranslated because of the 2,000 years and 3,000 years that went by yes. after the people who wrote it and listened to those yes. stories. So Ega, to that point, it's important to say we live in Israel, we mm-hmm. live in Tel Aviv, we are Hebrew speakers. Yes, we have bad English. <laughs> We're going to talk about uh, the accents in a, in a minute. But we can read the text uh, in its original form, which we, are, which we are going to do in this podcast, and contrast it with uh, the King James Bible version that was uh, written in 1611, mm-hmm. England. And this contrast between this, the, the Shakespearean version and the ancient Hebrew text, which we can understand just by reading it, most of it, and then there are tools to decipher some stuff that is harder to understand. So that basis gives also, uh, I think, our podcast an advantage and uh, a deeper insight into, into how it was written. And uh, maybe deep insight into the people who lived here because we live here. <laughs> and, <Yes. laughs> and maybe there, it's a very unscientific uh, way of thinking, but maybe there's something in the air. <laughs> Oh, we also studied uh, the Bible since the grade the first or second yeah, grade yeah, so uh, it's like this we live in a, in a place that sees itself as the direct continuation of those people who yeah. wrote those stories so this is embedded in the DNA of our culture yes and when we say the Bible we mean the Old Testament, the Old Testament. don't we <laughs> I don't know if this podcast will reach uh, the New Testament but Because that <laughs> <laughs> that's a whole other ball game it's yeah. 500 episodes yeah. in the future <laughs> but we hope to do just the entire book the entire yeah. book it could be years mm-hmm. it could be amazing it's uh, it's really a, a challenge of biblical proportion that we took uh, upon ourselves and uh, I hope that uh, you will be patient with our accent with our accent and with uh, your accent I think mine is okay Yes, you're also okay. My pronunciation <laughs> no, 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 is not that good, but uh, the no, more no, podcast that will, the more episode that we will record, my English will uh, improve. Uh, it's, I, I disappoint myself sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> As we're recording this introduction, we already recorded six episodes. So two episodes about the first creation story. Two episodes about the second creation story because there's a second creation story and then the Garden of Eden and, and Ken and Abel and Ken and Abel we had like very minor audio issues in the first uh, episode we didn't want to re-record them because we felt the delivery was uh, was done well yeah and we hope to keep a weekly schedule at, at least that's uh, that's the plan yeah. as of now to post every week uh, an episode let's see if it works yeah that's the ambition yeah The feeling that you need to get from this podcast is not uh, we don't have any budget or uh, maybe skill <laughs> to write a, a eight uh, season uh, TV series about uh, the Bible uh, a realistic Bible portrayal of the times. So imagine it is some kind of a story. Yes, yes, and it yeah. works well with the conversation. It's not like uh, uh, the history podcasts that are basically like a lecture. Yes. Obviously, we haven't mentioned this, but uh, <laughs> the reason that these stories from uh, 3,000 years ago are still relevant is because of the political uh, and historical uh, effect and impact that they had and still have on our culture. So... It's not like you're reading uh, the Homeric tales yes. and you can uh, look at it as, as they are. Here there's a lot of baggage yeah. coming in because people believe 
in God. Yeah. And, and they, they believe in these stories. In these stories, uh, this is uh, the holy book. <laughs> so we haven't even mentioned this yes. <laughs> up to now because we're just like totally not going to look at it this way. Yeah. We're not going to, uh, I don't know, ridicule people yeah, or, who, dismiss, yeah. or dismiss people who believe in it. Uh, that's fine. But we're giving our points of view and we're going to look at it as, uh, as, as people are reading whatever, the Gilgamesh uh, tales or about the stories about the gods of Asgard. Yeah, but the advantage that we have is that if you want to understand more the historical context and the emotional and psychological context and the consciousness of the people who wrote it, you will have to find a Sumerian that lives, mm -hmm. still lives in this area that's, that's and still as, 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 as a descendant as of as Gilgamesh and the yeah. stories of the people who wrote the stories of Gilgamesh and the religion that Gilgamesh was uh, yeah, whatever part of, yeah. part of is still relevant in his or her life. That yes. Is. So and, and also in like most people's lives, because it's not only Christians, but also Muslims. Muslims exactly. So this is like uh, the majority of the world. These, uh, these stories are still relevant. That's why it's in podcast form. So we won't get assassinated. <laughs> you don't know how we look. Uh, so, OK, to cap off the, the introduction, Henri, what stories are you most looking forward to uh, doing episodes about? As a history buff? I'm very much looking forward uh, for Kings, Kings 1, Kings 2. Okay. To me, it's like the most accurate uh, telling of history in terms of the details that uh, are mentioned there. So the history there is more relevant and more real than if you want to analyze the first creation stories and the legends and Noah tales. Yeah. It's, not a, it's not history. So... You will have to analyze the period that it was written and not the period that is portraying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And in Kings, I think it's more like a, re uh, a recent history, like two, 200 or 300 years, that was pretty much recorded outside mm -hmm. of, the, of, the Bible. of the Bible. Yes. So, so you it's more real to me. I can more, I am, I can more imagine it as some kind of a Game of Thrones type of uh, series or uh, an epic movie, but realistically played by real people and not, uh, you know, Charlton Heston. Uh, I'm looking forward to something that is closer to where we are now. Uh, Abraham, Abraham, Yaakov, Jacob is a very interesting character, a thief and a liar. So I'm looking forward to that. Uh, so we're going to have uh, somewhat of a constant uh, recurring uh, disagreement about the quality of the language uh, used in the text. Uh, a minor disagreement you're gonna be a little bit uh, more uh, dismissive of uh, of the quality. If you want to say dismissive, okay. I, I don't see it like, like Okay, that. so we'll see it as we go on. Uh, I am uh, much more willing uh, to see the beauty yeah. in the simplicity of, uh, of the language, of the text. Mm -hmm. That has, I think, a lot of quality. Uh, anything else you want to say before we uh, send them off to the first episode about the creation story? We're going to talk about the nature of, uh, of God. Who is this God? Uh, keep an open mind. I think that if you will connect yourself to their brains, as you say, <laughs> <laughs> I think it will give you a totally new perspective about this, those stories. Right. Uh, right. And you will understand them much more not in terms of what they are trying to communicate the religious aspects the mythology in terms of like transport yourself yes. to the period that these uh, stories yes. were written it's a journey yes i think like we feel that we are on a journey mm -hmm. and hopefully going to come with us and see all these stories in different ways look at it as a text but basically it's a voyage mm -hmm. and we invite you to come on this voyage with us Thank you, and uh, we'll see you all in the first episode. Yes. Cool. Bye, everybody. Bye.